And that's like the typical benefits that we get from read write isolation and it makes a lot of sense, at least in the modern world. First, I want to talk about the isolation of these nodes, right? So when you say isolation, do you mean like uh, uh, isolation should between... not? Yeah, the, the different nodes. So the, the node that is ingesting should not be serving reads and so on. So basically the idea is uh, uh, if you isolate that, the, the, the benefit that you get is basically your failures are limited to certain domains. If a, if a single node is down, you know that you know, just the ingestion is down. It doesn't affect your query. It doesn't affect any sort of other operation. So that way, uh, you know, and, and people actually access observability systems when something is wrong and you just don't want to give them that, that, uh, problem of, okay, the observability system is also now <laughs> behaving early, right? So, uh, you want to limit the failure domain. And so mm -hmm. that was the main, main thought process behind that. Right. But, uh, uh, other than that, it also, you know, you're able to actually choose the, the hardware properly. So for example, the ingest node is is essentially network heavy so for example uh, if you are if you are running it in production you can choose network optimized nodes for ingestion but for query we'll choose mm -hmm. cpu optimized nodes mm -hmm. so that way you are able to actually choose better hardware uh, uh, for which is which is suitable for the job that the node is doing